What up, y'all? It's Andre Cavassier, and today I'll be showing you guys how I use the Bold Hold Active and the Bold Hold Lace Wig Tape. So what up, y'all? Today we'll be using the Bold Hold Lace Wig Tape along with the Bold Hold Active. So you wanna you just grab your favorite hairspray and you know, prime your cap because it does have makeup on it and you want that um, tape to go ahead and stick. So don't get mad at me, and I know how y'all girls like to tussle, but we're not using alcohol, and that's because it's very damaging and drying to the skin, as y'all should know. Um, that's why we also don't remove our lace with it either. When you have your clients, or if you really feeling like you really wanna slay that install, we're gonna use some oil-free makeup wipes um, just to, you know, clean your base off. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and grab one of these wipes out so I can cleanse, you know, this makeup off my skin. And you know, prep it. And y'all might find these at Target on sale. Go get you some. So yeah, I'm gonna go right below my cap. Get that excess makeup off. I try not to put too much makeup on my forehead because I knew I was gonna be putting on my wig. And you know, it gives very much work smarter and not harder. And as I'm wiping off this, I wanna make sure, and also, alcohol causes your cap to lift. So you know, sometimes you get that roll back. It's because the alcohol is, you know, seeping under your cap or whatever product you use to um, lay your cap down, it's, you know, causing it to lift. Now you gotta start that all over because then it'd've been pointless. I wanna make sure I get enough makeup off. Make sure y'all get your sides real good because I know the, that's the, yeah, the girl's problem areas, you know? And on the sides, that's where we'll be using the um, Bold Hold Lace Wig Tape um, just to give you that extra security and you know, that facelift we be looking for when we um, install an our wig. And then you wanna go ahead and prep your skin using the Bold Hold skin protectant. And I know some of y'all don't be using this. Y'all always ask me what I be using to um, remove my lace or to protect your skin because you be getting bumps and all of that. You have to create a barrier between your skin and the glue so that, you know, it doesn't irritate you. You literally have a product on your skin that's not used to being on your skin. Go ahead and use that. And as you're watching this video, you should be writing all of this stuff down so that you could go to the website and you could get your, you know, product. Boom. Do not wipe, jab. Okay. Let that set and dry. Fan it real quick. And you're one step closer to being, you know, laid and melted down. So I got some alcohol on the sideline, not for the hairline. Um, and I like to clean my finger off with it just because I feel like the application is, you know, just a little bit easier and smoother and I have more control with my finger to get that thin layer that I need instead of, you know, pushing out too much product, trying to work it through and just doing too much. And now you gotta start from scratch. So yeah. And if y'all watch my videos, like, you always see me using my finger. And I know the girls like to tattoo again and be talking about the oil on the finger, please. A wise woman once told me it ain't that much oil in the world unless you just finish eating Popeyes, okay? Boom. So that's done. Literally gonna take a drop on my finger apply a thin layer and a little goes a long way. I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way to the sides as always. Applying some on the cap.
Now, any um, glue that my finger happened to not catch, I'll go back in with this spatula and I'll, you know, gently spread it out. But you see how this is clear already? Literally. People will be saying, oh, it turns white. It's because you're putting too much. Or you just didn't clean your skin properly. But look, it's literally dry. So, lo and behold, I've been using, I, I started using the tape and then I stopped because I thought I was, I knew I was using it wrong, but I wasn't even using it wrong, I was cutting it wrong. So if you can zoom in real quick, you'll see a line that divides, you know, one side from the other. And what I was doing was, you know, cutting between that line. So it was making it harder for me to, you know, pick at the, the tape. You don't wanna do that. You wanna literally cut between the two to where it looks like it's four down, four squares. I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna put it on this side, and I'm gonna take the other one, put it on that side. Okay, so I'm gonna peel that off gently and place this piece right where my um, ear tab will be. We'll talk about the ear tabs later on in this video, but the ear tabs is very, very important. It gives you like an anchor so that your lace has something to stick to. right here, literally on top of my cap. And press that firmly into my skin so that it adheres. Same for the other side. Now I want y'all to pay close attention to when I put this wig on, just watch how my face looks like this. And that's why, you know, we wear front tools. I love a good closure wig when you want to just pop her on real quick. But the front tools, it gives like, oh, what surgery you went to, you know? But that's neither here there. Y'all see how easy that came on? I was doing that all wrong. So that's part one of the facelift. Part two, we'll be putting out a second layer of glue right before we lay our lace. And you're also gonna put a layer of glue on top of that um, tape. Cause it's about to get very much snatched. <sighs> Still gonna use my finger. Y'all, I'm just really focused on um, this application. I hate watching the tutorials where you're sitting in silence. I know some people love to um, watch and be focused, but you know, I need you to be feeling like you want to time with me and we want to get together. And y'all see how quickly that dries? Literally. Today I'm gonna be applying a uh, custom Kavasi unit made by yours truly. Hopefully it fits because I just quickly made this wig. Okay. Okay, I'm So once that dries clear, you wanna go ahead and put your lace in. I wouldn't wait too long because you still wanna have the tackiness of the glue. That way your lace is getting 
the the full experience of you know melting down so i'm gonna take my wig she's pinned up you know the girl is ready let me snatch those sparse hairs out i'm gonna start from the middle and i'm gonna work my way to the side Don't make no facial expressions. Don't bend your forehead. Don't do none of that. You do not want no rippling and you also do not want it. You don't want to place your lace somewhere don't blow. Okay, let me go ahead and put that in. I usually like to take a comb and you know that's my lady into that glue. And I know right around this area is where some of you girls have trouble with your lace and that is because you cut straight across and not going down, you know, um, framing your ear, basically. You need this extra piece. Do not cut this piece off. This piece is gonna help your lace, you know, stay in the corners, you know. You need those ear tabs. So you just wanna cut around your ear and not over your ear, if that makes sense. So I know some of you may know me and some of you may not. Um, I'm Andre, as I can tell. Um, as y'all seen from the beginning of the video. And I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I started doing hair about uh, professionally a couple years ago. In my room doing my ones and twos, trying to make a point, like eight years ago. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, you can carve this out on your clients. You could carve it out with the ends of your comb. That way you know, um, you have a guideline to where your ear is so you don't nip them we're like a little bit too late in the game to be you know cutting out clients mistakes do happen but you know better safe than sorry um so carve her ear out and then cut me personally i've been doing this for a little while so i'm gonna do all of that i don't even have to look but i'm gonna look for video purposes now y'all see i cut around my ear i have this ear tab this ear tab is you know, sometimes it can make your way glueless, or it just gives you that extra, you know, you, you need this ear tab. I don't even know how to explain it, but you need it. Make sure you don't cut your ear tab off. I'm gonna go around, keeping my ear tab. So just think of like a V shape. Look, I got my two ear tabs, and I'm gonna place some glue right under those because you just never know how long your wig is gonna be in length. Um, that's why I like to, when I'm making my wigs, I like to keep all the lace on. I don't cut no, I don't pre-cut lace because I don't want it to be um, too short for my hair. So I'm gonna place some glue in the spots that, you know, my lace has missed um, after applying the glue. So yeah, as I'm doing this, we can have like girl chat, we could just talk about things because, you know, um, it's pretty much, you know, the same thing as the beginning. And if I do say so myself, the lace is definitely melted and this is not even the meltdown. So this is just like, you know, the initial melt. Okay, so you want to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glue to my ear. So yeah, like I said, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I started social media maybe in 2012, 2013. I was doing some rapping videos and, you know, um, I would do freestyle videos and then I went viral for doing this one video called um, Addressing Mother Nature. And it was really, really cold outside. I was on my way to who God knows where and I was just freezing. So I was like, let me just make a video about the weather. 
and I think, you know, everything happens for a reason because if it wasn't for that video, I wouldn't have, you know, had a social media presence and not only that, but um, I wouldn't have had, got a big following after that. So that happened in about 2014. The beginning of 2014. And then I started doing, I'm gonna put two layers on my ears. You wanna make sure it's very secure. So we're gonna let that dry clear. I started doing Remy Ma's hair um, when I was 18. And I worked with her for about seven years. And I knew nothing about hair. I knew nothing about lace. I didn't know nothing. Oh. So before there was Bold Hole, and this is how I started using Bold Hole because we wanted our wigs to today. We was using, you know, products that was not basically for lace. And Bold Hole came out. It was this other product, but that's neither here there. Um, Boho came out and we started using that and that's how I started to install her um, Her wigs I wasn't doing and we used to call them lace fronts back in the day Now we call them frontals But yeah, so I started doing that then I started doing hair videos and that's what brought my following up and Of course with a following which nobody will ever tell you guys because the people who are um influencers and you know social media savvy have to make it seem like everything is 112 peaches and cream but last year I went into this big depression because social media starts to take a toll on you when it becomes your job and it's the way you feed yourself your family and it's the way to pay the bills but everything just started crashing on me because I started living a life that really wasn't my life. And so you have to be careful of what you, um, what you're impressed by via social media. Like all of this is cool and it's, you know, fine and dandy, but always have your own outlook on life and what you're trying to portray for yourself because you're lit you'll literally just wake up one day and crash and burn. And that's what happened to me. And I was in that depression for about five or six months. I gained so much weight. It was just really bad. And I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy and I wouldn't wish that on no one. It was just, it was, it was terrible. Um, and at that point, bags, shoes, social media, none of that stuff matters because you're thinking about all the things that you don't have. And that one important thing is your sanity. And I didn't have my sanity at that point. And so I wasn't thinking about social media. I wasn't thinking about my friends. I wasn't thinking about my family. And nobody wanted to be placed in that spot, especially when you have control over, you know, your life ultimately. So, for all my girls that want to be social media influencers, do it for the right reasons and never ever be impressed, like ever, ever. So this glue dries pretty quickly. Um, I can go ahead and place my lace down using the wide part of the um, comb. Just so I can get in between those hairs without getting my hairs in the glue. And I'm gonna lay that into my glue. And y'all, I'm melted. I'm not to even flatter myself, but. The lace is lacing, okay? And then this extra piece of ear tab, we're not even gonna bother with that. Cut it.
and I decided to go with a side part today because I think side parts are so feminine for me. Because you know, sometimes she could look like Floyd Mayweather in a wig. And today I wanted to look like, you know, not Floyd. <laughs> So I did the side part, I was gonna do a middle part, but then I feel like with the middle part, you gotta wear baby hairs and stuff like that. Me personally, I don't like baby hairs all the time. And I think that's what separates the girls from who do lace and the girls who do lace. Um, but you learn something new every day with lace. I'm telling you, sometimes you slay an install and then sometimes it's just like, damn, where did I mess up? Another thing that I wanna give you advice on is Filters is cool and it give you some, it give you pop and it give you like, it puts a different, you know, twang on some lace. But never cheat yourself when you're doing your clients. If you gotta go up and, you know, put flash on it and some lace look out of place, fix it because you're only cheating yourself in the end. And if a client comes to you and it ain't what they seen online, you gonna be tight. You gonna be that tight, so yeah. As a hairstylist, you just learn certain things. You learn that um, certain products you can't use in film or in pictures and under certain lighting. And that's another thing too, with this blue. Um, when you're under like blue lights and you're under certain lighting, you don't have that white flashback. So if you work with clients and they be on TV, doing green screen and stuff like that, they're good. So them ear tabs, I told y'all we needed them. I'm pretty sure y'all see I got the facelift that I wanted. I'm gonna go ahead and um, use my bold hole lace band. It's like an elastic band. And this is pretty like new. Like I wasn't doing this two, three years ago. I wasn't putting, but it really helps that lace melt into the skin. I guess it like presses it without you pressing it physically. And yeah. So I'm gonna, um, after initially placing my lace where I want it to be, I'm gonna use my blow dryer on cool. A lot of people use warm, don't use warm. You're remelting the glue. You wanna use cool and you know, set that lace into the glue. Pressing it firmly. Now I did um, pre-pull out some edges that I wanted. I think it helps it lay flatter when you, um, you know, hot comb it prior to your install and then pull it out during the install. So I think it's like this piece right here. Very thin pieces. Like I said, I'm not a crazy fan of the baby hairs, but you know, a nice little swoop would be cute. So I'm gonna pull that out prior to putting my boho elastic band on. Now this is what gives you that real melt. Like this is what's gonna really do it. This is what's gonna set it into the skin. So I'm gonna pull out this piece right here. Um, I really don't want to sideburn and I definitely don't want to sideburn because my um, ear tab is a little bit far down and a sideburn right there is not realistic. So I'm just gonna give myself like a piece of edge right here, you know. Not just yet. Um, take out some of the front. Edge placement is definitely important because you don't want it to look like it don't belong right there. You know. So I'm gonna pull that out, and then I think I have some light like, gray right here. So right now this is how we're looking and this elastic band has like a velcro strip on it so it's like 
one size fit all. So it's like adjustable, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on. I'm gonna put mine on as tight as possible, but not too tight to where it'll, you know, cause your lace to um, ripple in the front. These installs be so good. Like if you um, follow all these steps, it'd be so good. And then you just mess up on that one thing. And it's just like, dang, I don't want my lace. So I'm gonna put that on. Oh shit. So I'm gonna put that on, you know, behind my curls. Press that in. I'm gonna move some of this hair out the way. I'm gonna take my blow dryer again, and while this elastic band is on, setting in my lace, I'm gonna blow dry it on cool. I know you was blow drying on warm, but for me, it really does nothing for me, but remelts the glue, and we're trying to dry the glue and set it into that lace. So you'll be sitting there thinking your lace is dry, 24 hours later, you know, it's peeling back because you was reheating it the whole time. I'm gonna do this for about five minutes. Um, but whatever works for you. When your arms get tired, stop. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my um, elastic band. So now I'm not the best baby hair edge person, which is kind of why I don't do them, but I had to learn because some clients actually really like them. But um, So do y'all like y'all hairlines thick? Well, not thick, but like plucked in full or you like to like go bald? I have this one client, she be like, please make sure my hairline is bald. And I'm like, girl, so you just got money to be spending on lace because once it's gone, it's gone. I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut this in a slanted motion. Keeping it still rather long. Same with this side. Tuck some of this out. I also learned that the key to like a good baby hair or like a wispy edge is to pluck in between that baby hair and get it as thin as possible, but not bald, if that makes sense. It gives it a little bit of a more natural look. It makes it look less swoopy, how we used to do. So, so real quick, I'm gonna go back in with my blow dryer and you know, make sure I could, you know, just dry anything that may still have a little tackiness or pull to it. Cause it does take the glue because it does take the glue a little while to, you know, set in. Maybe about five, 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna be using a mousse for my edges so I can get that soft baby hair look. And I don't want that to um, interrupt the glue and, you know, the liquid, you know, causes my glue to lace, causes my glue to lift because it wasn't fully dry. It's never fully dry until maybe the next day. So you don't wanna use too much product you don't want to sweat. I be having girls ask me, can they go to the pool? And it's just, you're doing too much. Like, this is not your real hair. It's glue, it's lace. Act accordingly. So you guys, I'll be using a foam, but I'm gonna, you know, focus the foam more so on the hair and less on the actual lace. That way, you know, we don't have too much interruption going on. Um, a good technique is to curl these. I don't have my mini curler with me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, um, you know, create a guideline of where I'm gonna want it to be smooth.
I always like to get that top layer of foam because it's less watery. And I'll go in and just swoop this without touching my legs. Once my edges is fully dry, I like to comb them out a little bit. You know, just add your finishing touches to them. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out my curls. So y'all, after I finished playing with my hair and getting it to where I want it to be, this is like the final look. She's melted, she's slayed. You got your layers, you got your lace, wood lace, we don't know. Your baby hairs is very soft and pretty. No lace lifted and it's a vibe. Thank you guys for watching and make sure you go follow me at Andre Kabasi Hair and go pick up your bold toe lace products from www.thehairdiagram.com.